Good morning from Brunei. Welcome to a different episode this week. I've been sent a MCP panel from Joe Smith. I'm going to have a quick look at it and see if we can improve it before sending it back. In the meantime, it's probably a view that you don't normally see, and that is I'm at work. It's Saturday morning, early hours. We've got a panel, we've got an aircraft on the pan as I speak. Let me turn you around so you can see that. So there's one of our mighty 212 bells. It's ready to go and rescue the other aircraft in the jungle. And while that's out flying, I'm going to head inside to the avionics bay and start stripping down Joe's MCP. And here we are in the avionics bay. It's my work desk and here is Joe's MCP that arrived yesterday afternoon. There's a few things missing from this MCP which I hope we can get added while we'll take it apart and redo it. That is the heading should have a bank angle indicator on it or selector knob. The AT auto arm LED is missing as are the MA enunciators here. There should be a speed invert I believe here and there's one more which I don't know if we're going to fit in, it might be over here. For the back, again, I never thought to use hot glue to put all the connectors in and that would have really helped me on my first one. Just because if you do not use hot glue on these connectors here, they are a pain in the bum. And that brings me to another thing. You can see that this board and this board are daisy chained and you can't really do that with the power and the ground. We're back in my workshop at home now and the first thing I want to do to Joe's MCP faceplate is cut these engraved corners out. As you can see I've got all the parts laid out in front of me here and here's Joe's face panel with the recesses cut out. The other three panels have been created on the CNC machine and are ready to be assembled now. So the face plate goes onto the back plate like so and they mount together like that. So what I have here is the first thing to go in his face panel and that's the 12 position rotary switch. I just need to drill a hole through the centre so to allow the encoder to go through the centre. With the rotary switch now drilled all the way through, it's now time to insert the 2mm rod. With the rotary switch, at this end we'll fit the encoder and that will screw in like so, all the way down to something like that. First of all, right here needs a screw thread and so does this to be able to screw the two together. All I need to do now is cut the returning thread, the female thread, in the encoder and then join them together. With the encoder drilled here, down here, with my threaded rod now tapped, Hopefully put these two together and create the assembly. There really is nothing, anything more satisfying than creating a threaded unit, especially when it feels that smooth going together. Insert the other part in and there we have it. 
a dual rotary and encoder set up ready to go. And that's what the panel looks like so far. Now, there's a few things missing from this panel and we need to put those in now. That's the MA lights for the flight directors left and right, captain and first officer. And there's the speed invert and the altitude invert push buttons just here, here and here. Now on Fusion, I put them in so it's just a simple case of drilling through. Now Joe's given me this, this Perspex panel and it is Perspex and it's very fragile. The whole reason why I created a back plate was because it's got so many cracks in it already and I'm having to be very careful. This should hopefully support the face plate and prevent it from cracking anymore. Let's see what we can do. It's just a matter of turning it around and drilling through the holes backwards so they're all pre-lined up. Should make things a lot easier. Next up for Joe's MCP is to fit the seven segment displays. And we've got the four digit ones. Let's see if I get any closer, there we go. And the three digit, so we'll be using both. And it's just a matter of peeling the display off the front, the cover, the protective screen, and gluing them in with the glue gun. Next up for Joe's MCP is his vertical speed wheel. This was already created. It's just a 3D printed wheel on an encoder. And it's got a bit of plastic around that we're just gonna hot glue to the frame. Very simple, but very effective. That's all the tactile switch is mounted to the back plate. And that is the very last board to go on. Two Arduinos and the three Max 7219 boards. And the very last component is the encoder we made at the start. And that simply goes through the sensor and gets locked off. And this is how Joe's MCP will look. I've got two colours of wire. Yellow I'll use for the common cathode and Orange I'll use for the anode, and that'll dictate which digits I'm using. That's all the wiring done for Joe's MCP with regards to the seven segment displays. As you can see now, I'm just tidying the wires up with a bit of string. And that, is all the grounds daisy chained up, ready for the LEDs to be fitted next. After that mammoth wiring session, it's now time to put the two halves together. Just got this last bit of lacing to do, then it's inside, do some programming and find all those faults. And there we have it, Joe's MCP, fully complete. Just got to make some knobs as well. In the meantime, 
let's head inside and start programming. I'm not going to show the programming of the MCP because that was done in a previous video and it's not very interesting and it makes the video very long and boring. With Joe's MCP now programmed in Mobiflight, it's time to hit run and make sure everything works. And just like when I did the DIY MCP, we'll just turn the encoders slow and then fast and see if it jumps up and it does, that's fine. Encoders work fine. Let's turn the flight director back on. Yeah, flight director, auto throttle, M1, green light, VOR, altitude hold, VS, that should come on. Pump it up. That's good. Switch works. Autopilot disengage works. So, Joe. I think you've got a fully working MCP heading your way. That's it from The Sim. Until the next episode, I'll catch you later, guys. All the best.